So as you can already see, and some of you already know, uh, I moved my shop around and man, I gained a lot of space and the uh, workflow in here is greatly improved. I move my shop around a lot. I don't like static things and there's always room for improvement. So uh, with that being said, I have the workbench going this way now because uh, I accidentally stumbled upon this, but I realized that I don't use the back side of my workbench hardly at all. Uh, most often it's just a walkway in the shop and the last orientation, so why not combine that walkway with the walkway going into the, into the house? And I pretty much only use like this much of the workbench anyway. This side is always just whatever, which leads me to the end device that I had over here. I never used it. I just really hadn't. So I moved it to this face so I could move the workbench closer to the wall. And just to get it out of the way, well, it was in the way right there. So I moved it over to here and forgot about it. And then uh, earlier this morning, it dawned on me that I think it was the Wood Whisperer who made a shop tour video in David Mark's shop several years ago. And he had a similar sized workbench and a similar sized cast iron vise on one end. And what he did is had he had a full length set of jaws that went across here with a dog hole on either side and then bench dogs on both sides. And I thought, well, I've got nothing better to do today. Um, and I'm kind of bored, so I figured I'd get it done. Uh, see, if I, see if I'll actually use it. So I've already got the dog holes on this side and I may have to adjust these just slightly or whatever, but I could drill the dog holes on this side. I'm not gonna do it right now, uh, maybe in the future. And what that, allow, what, will, what that will allow me to do is put a dog on either side here and then use this center dog, or the two on the ends if I use those, and hold like a large piece, like a tabletop or something like that to work on the end. And um, yeah. There's alternate ways to do that. You could clamp a tabletop to either side, but uh, I think that'll be interesting, something to play around with. So to make the jaws for that, I've got this piece of pine back here. This is a two by 10 that's been sitting for a while. And it's been vertical for its entire length of storage. So I'm guessing it's not flat at all. <laughs> no, it's not. So I'll cut this in half and then rip one side and half and that'll be the two jaws for right here. We'll see what happens. All right, so here's the two boards and I jointed them on three sides. This edge is not jointed or plain at all. It's just the factory edge and that's fine because that'll go on the bottom and nobody will care. So this is what we'll see from the top, but over here. Now the uh, vise is not inset into the workbench. It is proud, so I need to cut a recess in one of these for that and I think this one has knots on it so it'll be on the inside and then this face has no knots so that'll be the outside face so let me set this aside so I don't mess with it and it looks like let's see looks like I'm going to use this as the inside face that touches the workbench so I can use a combination square to determine that the vise is inset this much so that's the that's the side of the vise in here and it is how long is this the vise is that long however long that is put a little mark 
Referencing off of the flat side, we'll make this extension. All of this gets removed. And it is down from the top that much. But you know what? I'm going to go a little bit more than that by about a 16th of an inch. That way I can plane the top nice and flush. And this is the top line. All of that needs to be removed. And how deep do we need to go? Come on. We need to go this deep. So from the bottom face, let's do it this way. That is our depth line. So, what do we want to use to remove all of this material? I think the drill press to remove most of it. This is a rather large drill bit, so I'm going to position the wood so that if this catches and gets out of my hands, which I don't think it will, but if it does, then the rotation is going to want to spin it into the pillar rather than spin it into me. And I've got my depth stop set. Come on. Approximately where my line is. I had to go back to the drill press and drill it just a little bit deeper, but now we have a nice fit. Snug left and right, which was lucky to get that on the first try. Uh, looks like my top angle inside here is not exactly level with the top surface. So I'm flush over here, but I've got extra over here. Not a big deal because this is all going to be trimmed nice and flush when it's done. But I do have a nice fit, so I'm just going to secure this jaw to the workbench with a couple screws. Now the front jaw right in front with the good side facing out. Alright, now I just need to trim it all up. I got the sides nice and flush, and I didn't go crazy with making them super smooth. Uh, it's This is just a workbench. So I'm going to plane across the top here and get these surfaces nice and flush. And I don't want to break out this backside, so I'm going to use this little guy. This is just a 
cheap, it's less than $10, little block plane. And the edge, uh, the, the blade holds an edge quite well. So in areas where I don't want to damage one of my nicer planes, like I could very easily slip and run into the vise here. So it's very handy for just small little chamfers on the corners of work pieces. So I'll put a chamfer on here. to prevent it from blowing out in just a second. Oh, there you go. See, I just did it. Just ran into that. Piece of the grain is sticking up right here, so it's not really, there we go. All right, now I'll just plane right across the top, and for that, I'll use this guy. It's got a little mass to it. Makes makes life easier. So there's, there's such a harsh contrast between the used side of the workbench and then of course this fresh wood. Now this has a coat of, um, what is it, uh, Danish oil. I, I originally did uh, boiled linseed oil and then like two months later I, I flattened the top and then put Danish oil on top. So I prefer Danish oil. Um, anyway, it's over a year old as this finish on top and it's used and abused and it's got some character. And this just looked like way too new. So I tried to feather it out just a little bit as far as the dirt and grime on this. And then not too long, this will look just as beat up as this. Uh, but anyway, that's that's pretty cool uh, little vise over here. Now, I, I don't need another vise right there. I really don't. Uh, but it is cool to have somebody else working side by side as I'm showing them something. So they can be using this end to do whatever they want to do as I'm working right here and it's a good amount of communication and it's real close for um, showing somebody something so that's cool and of course making shavings is fun I don't know when I'll get around to putting the other dog holes in there if I'll even get around to putting the other dog holes in there uh, I don't know if this end device over here or this end movable jaw will remain pine. Uh, it's about an inch and uh, seven sixteenths of an inch thick, maybe inch and three eighths. Uh, but if I put a dowel in here for the for the dogs, like I've been doing, that doesn't leave me much material. So this may end up being changed out to something like hickory or something, something that has a little bit more mass to it, a little bit stronger to accept a larger dowel for the dogs. But anyway, fun little break from reality into the shop. And now I've got to go do some computer work. So you guys take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to you next time.